What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're gonna look at two different x-rays and see if you can tell which is which and what the disease process is. I'm gonna tell you the answer at the end. Let's dive in. All right, so as I said, we're talking all about chest x-ray reviews in this video. Before we jump into that, head over to respiratorycoach.com, check out uh, the resources there, the TMC, the CSE Bootcamp, all the mini courses, everything there to make your life easier and you more successful on your uh, exams that you're taking. Please check that out. I would greatly appreciate it. And here is our first x-ray. Now, when you look at x-rays, the hardest thing to, to do is to not jump to conclusions. And so with this one, you want to take your time, take a look at it, and tell me uh, down in the comments below, just go down there and say, hey, what is it? This is x-ray number one. What do you think is going on with this x-ray? I'm going to give you just a second here to, uh, to talk about it, and then I'm going to show you um, a, a couple of key elements that might guide you if you're uncertain on what this x-ray is. So uh, when we look at this x-ray, the first thing I notice is that there... I can see two lung fields, but they don't look the same. And so when I look over on this region, I see more white, more haziness, more opaqueness. When I look on this side of the x-ray, what I find is more blackness, more increased radio or hyperlucency. And so I realize that uh, right off the bat. I also notice that the uh, mediastinum is shifted over this way. If I uh, were to illustrate a couple of things here, you may would see where I could draw the heart border is right about here. And that is shifted over to our patient's left. You also see that the carina is over here and comes down right there. That is shifted over as well. Now, when we look at this, I also notice that over here where I have this increased radiolucency, I don't see any lung markings. And so I'm, I'm, I ask, and that's a big, that's a big giveaway. Um, I can see lung markings over here. You kind of see they feather out to the edge. It is more opaque, but I can still see them out to the uh, thoracic edge. But over here, I don't see any lung markings. It just looks very dark, very black, very hollow. And that's because there are no lung markings on this side. I also see the costophrenic angle come way down here. And this is a telltale sign of this disease process known as the deep sulcus. Now, I'm going to leave it right here. And we're going to come back to this in a second to see if you were correct on what you thought it was. Now, when we go to the next x-ray, we see something that looks different. You see, now we see still two lung fields, but they are definitely not equal. They don't look the same. And our lung field over on this side of this x-ray is clearly not the same as the lung field on this side. It's going to be indicative of another unilateral lung disorder. And what I see is when I look at this x-ray, I see a lot of radiopaqueness down in this region. I also can't visualize the left costophrenic angle. If I come up here and was to draw like, where does the, does the aerated lung field stop? I would draw something like this. It looks like it stops somewhere right around there, but I do not see a costophrenic angle over here on this side. And remember the left hemidiaphragm sits slightly lower, or should I say the right hemidiaphragm sits slightly higher due to the liver than the left hemidiaphragm. So if this is my costophrenic angle here, then I should see another costophrenic angle over here slightly lower than that, but I don't see that, do I? And this is, this is a clue on what's going on. Now, before we talk specifically about what it is, when I look at this lung, I see good aerated lung. I see lung markings that feather all the way out to the edge of the uh, thoracic wall. So I, I see lung markings all the way out. I see lung markings in here out to the edge of the thoracic wall. The problem is right here and what's going on right there to make this more opaque. Now, I also see my carina, my trachea comes down and deviates slightly over that away as well. So 
in both of these x-rays, something is pushing the, the, the trachea to the opposite side. I think we can agree that there's a problem here and my trachea is being shifted to the right. On the previous one, remember the problem looked like it was on the right chest and the trachea was pushed to the left. And this is a clue to tell you what is happening here with all of this radiopaqueness because the fact that the trachea is going away from it tells you that there is something in the pleural space pushing everything over. It's not a loss of alveolar volume that's pulling it towards it, such as atelectasis, something else going on here. So let's put them side by side and look at them together. Okay, so here's what we see when we go side by side. This was x-ray number one, x-ray number two. Two different findings, but the thing they have in common is that both of these are problems with the pleural space. If you guessed that this x-ray number one was a pneumothorax, then you guessed correctly. And if you looked at x-ray number two and you said, you know what, I feel like that this right here is an obliterated claustrophrenic angle due to fluid in the pleural space, then you are absolutely correct if you said that that was some type of pleural effusion. It could be exudative, transudative, it could be a, a hemothorax, uh, but there's some type of fluid in the pleural space that is, that is causing that impairment over there. Remember, both of these, Anytime you have fluid or air in the pleural space, depending on the amount of air or fluid, then you can get the trachea being shifted or pushed away from the affected side, which is exactly why we see the trachea pushed this away on this x-ray, the pneumothorax, and pushed this away on this x-ray being the large pleural effusion. So those are just two x-rays. I think it's always fun to look at x-rays, look at them side by side, and test your knowledge. What is going on with this x-ray? And, uh, and you'll become better at looking at, reading, and understanding x-rays just by spending some time in them. Okay, so uh, that's a pneumothorax versus a pleural effusion chest x-ray. I'm Respiratory Coach. Do me a favor. Stay right here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe, like, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear if you got it right or not uh, when we started going through this exercise. And then, of course, also find me on the other socials, Instagram, TikTok, at Respiratory Coach, LinkedIn, at Joe Lewis. And then finally, respiratorycoach.com, your landing page for the resources you're looking for to successfully tackle those credentialing and your classroom exams. Remember at the end of the day, average is easy, don't be it.